Christy, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Lawn Fawn Swan Soiree. So I've stamped out the images I'll be using on some Nina Solar White cardstock with black licorice ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with some warm grays for the swans. I'm using W00, W1, and W3. I want to be careful that these swans don't look too dark because I want them to still be white, but I'm also creating a nighttime scene, so I need to have some strong shadows. So I'm laying in that W3 first, just in a few areas where I think the shadows would be most prominent, and then I'm going to begin to pull that out with the W1 and really soften up those lines. Just going to go over and add a little bit of detail to those wings and kind of separate out those little scallops and then I'll come in with the W00 and blend that out even further but I'm going to let that fade off into the white area. I definitely want to leave uh, a lot of white space there so that they don't look dingy. And I got a little bit too thick with those lines, so I'm going to grab my colorless blender and just push back a little bit of that color so that there's more of that white space separating those divided lines that I drew in. Then I'm going to take the Y000 and add a little bit of that on the area that I want to be highlighted. Um, there's going to be a moon casting a glow on the scene here, and so I definitely wanted to add a little bit of that pale yellow to look like the moonlight is hitting their bodies. I did the coloring of the female swan off screen, but I'm just going in and showing you how I did the highlights on the opposite side of her body since they are facing each other, and the moon will be right behind them. Then I'm moving on to W5 and W7. When I looked at pictures of swans, they often had this little black flap that was like right behind their beaks on their faces. And so I wanted to kind of incorporate that into the scene. I'm making the males just a little bit more prominent than the females, just to differentiate them a little bit and give them their own personality. And for that, I use W5 and W7. For their beaks, I'm using YR04 and YR07. I put a little YR07 at the bottom and then blended most of the way up with the YR04, leaving a little shadow for that moonlight glow. This time I'm going to bump it up to the Y13. I figured that anything that had a shiny surface would uh, intensify that glow, so I'm going to go back and forth between a couple different yellows. For the grasses, I'm using G24 and G28, and I'm shading those in the direction that they're bending away from the light. So the part that would be furthest away and kind of bent in the curve, I used the G28, and then I blended upward with the G24, saving a little bit of space for that highlight that I'm going to add in in a minute. But before I do that, I'm also going to color the little lily pad with these same greens. I thought I would just keep it simple, especially since it's a nighttime scene. I didn't want anything too fresh. I did want something really dark. I'm going to quickly color in the leaves on the flower crown exactly the same way. And then I will bring in my highlight color and I'm going to use the Y11 this time. I didn't think that the grasses were going to be as shiny as the beak, but they also wouldn't be as absorbent of color as the feathers of the swans. So I went kind of in between those two. For the cattails, I'm using E43, E44, and E47, and I already know that I'm going to place one on each side of the scene, so I'm going to shade them in opposite directions, putting the uh, shadow of the one on the left 
on the left and the one on the right on the right and then just blending toward the opposite side and again leaving that little sliver of space for the Y11 so that everything has the same consistent glow. Moving on to the RV10 and RV11. I'm going to color in the water lily and also the little flowers in the crown. Um, I just used a little of the RV11 first and then blended up in a feathering motion with the RV10. And then I gave just the female swan a rosy cheek so she had a nice blush there. And then I'll use just a step up the RV13 and RV14 to color the centers of those tiny flowers in the crown. And then again with that Y triple zero, I figured the flowers would be about the same um, shininess or lack of shininess as the swan feathers. So I used the real pale yellow and then trimmed all of these out with the matching dyes. For my background, I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and I'm adhering a circular mask in the center of the panel. This is one that I have used before, but I like to save them and reuse them. So I'm going to mask off the space that I want for my moon. And then right around that, I'm going to blend on some mustard seed distress oxide ink. And that is going to give that outside edge of the moon the same glow that was showing up in the coloring. So I needed a little bit of that glow to make the rest of the scene make sense. And then around that, I'm going to add some worn lipstick. And it's not going to look great in the area between them just yet, but I am going to go back to the mustard seed and blend over that transition so you get almost like a peachy shade between. And then um, add a little bit more of the worn lipstick again. Distress inks are all about working in layers, so um, don't be discouraged if it doesn't look right at first. You just need to keep blending. Then I'm going to bring on some seedless preserves on the outside edge so that that rosy pink fades into a really pretty purple and that will give us that nighttime look that I'm going for. I'm going to blend back again with that worn lipstick to smooth the transition between the purple and the pink. And then I will grab the mustard seed one more time since that pink was starting to encroach on the uh, glow around the moon. I still want that to be really prominent. So I'm just working my way back and forth until I have a look that I'm happy with. And then I decided that I needed the sky to be just a little bit deeper on the outside edges. So I brought in Blueprint Sketch and this time I'm only going to add just the barest little bit right on the outside edges and the top two corners. Once I'm happy with that, I will set that aside to dry and work on the next panel, which I trimmed down using the Lawn Fawn Meadow Borders. I'm going to go back to my mustard seed so I can have that cast light on the top of the grasses. And then I'm going to move down to Twisted Citron. So I'm going to blend the edge of the yellow into the green and just get a nice base down on the top half of that. And then I'll bring in mowed lawn to finish that off. So I'm just going to add that darker green and then I'll go back over the transition with the twisted citron and call it good. So now I can peel off that mask to reveal the moon, although it doesn't really look much like a moon, it's just a blank white circle. So I'm going to add some coloring with Copics to just make it look a little bit more realistic. Starting with the Y000 and I'm doing a backwards C shape on the right hand side there. And I'm using more of the side of my nib to lay down a lot of color at once and really saturate that section so that all of the colors that I'm going to build with here are going to blend nicely. 
I also laid in some colorless blender to help with that. And now I'm deepening things up with the Y11. I'm going to work back and forth on those a bit and get that really nice and soft looking and uh, just get it nice and kind of uh, melting together, I guess you could say. To knock that back a bit and ensure that it looks more like the moon than the sun, which it's kind of leaning toward right now, I'm adding some W00 and going right over the edge of a lot of those yellows. I also brought that ring around to the left hand side and now I'm starting to create some crater shapes. Then I'll grab the W1 and go right on the bottom of those craters and do a little semicircle to deepen up those shadows. And then I'll go back to my W00 and just soften those up. And then as a final step, I'm going to grab my colorless blender once again and just kind of sweep over everything and make it look nice and soft and hazy once again. So now that my grassy border is dry, I'm going to stamp my sentiment and I'm using Dusty Concord Distress Oxide ink to stamp Life is Beautiful with You. And I decided I wanted a little bit more variety in that sentiment. So I removed everything except for the word beautiful. And I'm going to stamp that down again using Blueprint Sketch. So that just layered right over top and gave me a nice bright blue uh, word in the center of the sentiment. So I'll set that aside to dry because that does take a while. And uh, I'm going to stamp on the inside of my card. I'm using Moonstone cardstock, which I thought was fitting, and Blue Jay ink. And all of the images and sentiment is from Swan Soiree except for the I Love You, which came from Critter Chatter Pets. So now I am finally ready to start the assembly. I die cut my background panel with the Lawn Fawn large stitched rectangle stackables. So it just gave it that nice stitched edge. And I'm going to glue that down flat to my card base. And then I'm going to grab the grassy border and adhere that as well. I'm going to be really careful because that sentiment is still wet, but I didn't want to delay filming any longer so I'm just going to be real careful around it. So I adhered that and now I can begin to add my images. I also stamped out the lake from Swan Soiree with that Blue Jay ink that I used on the inside of the card and then I took my uh, Y11 marker and added a little bit of uh, that moonlight glow to the white areas of that pond. And now I'm going to add my swans on top of the lake. I'm adhering them both at the same time so that I can get the spacing just right. I wanted them to be just centered inside that moon, but give them a little bit of space between. Then I'm going to start adding in my little cattails. I wanted to tuck one under the edge of the pond, so I needed to do that while the glue was still wet there. And then I'm taking the other set of cattails and adhering it um, on the opposite side. So I had to make sure that I had the highlights facing in the correct direction for that. Then I'm going to take the lily pad and I'm going to add that to the bottom left, sort of behind the male swan there. And I'll add the little water lily as well. My original plan was to put that on the right hand side in front of the female swan, but then I realized that once I add the flower crown on her head, then all the flowers would be on the right hand side and I just wanted to spread it around a little more. So I switched that to the left and put the grasses on the right. As a final embellishment, I decided to take my white Sakura jelly roll pen and fill the sky with stars. So I'm concentrating it more in the darker areas. I didn't think that the stars would show up real well in that glow around the moon. So I'm mostly going on the outside edges and this 
just bringing them in a little bit and I'm making sure to vary the size so that it looks a little more realistic. And that is going to complete my card for today. I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all the detail and give you another peek at the inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video with these sweet little swans and their moonlight rendezvous. I had so much fun making it for you. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't. You can also ring that notification bell to make sure that my videos always end up in your feed. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one of those to check them out. I hope that you're all staying safe and healthy and that you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.